Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar. My name is Natasha Kipper and I'm the Training Services Manager at Cubic AMF. I will be your moderator for today's webinar. Thank you for joining us today. In the midst of this, let's say, very confusing time we're currently trying to navigate through. With me today, I have a few of my colleagues and experts in their respective areas and industry, and together, we are going to discuss and share ideas, best practices, and solutions to help proprietors and operators such as yourselves navigate through these unusual circumstances. As you are aware, a large number of venues across the country are closed for business, including many of our bowling facilities. What we want to accomplish here today is not only provide you information on the things that, can, that you, you can be doing while your business is closed, but also provide you an opportunity to interact with us in a live environment, offer any help and support we can, and answer any questions you might have for us. We intend to host live webinars every Wednesday at 2 p.m. for the upcoming weeks. While we're going to cover a variety of topics, each week we'll have a focus on different elements of your business and operation. Before we deep dive into our topics today, let me introduce, introduce you to our panel of experts. With me, I have Brian Kane, who is the Senior Scoring Technology Expert and has been working with Cubic AMF Systems for over 25 years. He owns and operates his own center in Pennsylvania and has a vast amount of systems knowledge and industry experience. Brian has been in the bowling industry for over 30 years and has successfully utilized Cubic AMF Systems in the center and operation. Mike Randizzi is a technical support manager. He has been with Cubic AMF for over 20 years and has held various positions within the company, such as center manager, software tester, programmer, etc. He has been providing technical support not only to our customers, but also our installers and trainers in the field, as well as many other internal resources. Last but not least, we also have Jay Nephew here with us today. Jay is a marketing specialist with Cubic AMF and has been with the company for over three years. He has been in the bowling industry, however, for, for over 35 years and has worked with centers of all makes and sizes. Before we get started today with our topics, I want to share just a couple of housekeeping items with you. We strongly encourage you to participate in this webinar by asking questions and maybe even sharing some of your best practices, um, things that are working for you right now. Um, at this time, I have everyone on mute to avoid background noise that may distract you from listening. And to send in your questions, please type them into the question box on the bottom of your control panel and I will bring them up. Also, if you choose to unmute yourself and um, have a discussion with us, I welcome you to do that as well. If you have joined us today to simply just listen in, that is perfectly fine as well. Okay, with all of this out of the way, let's dive into our topics um, for today. And as I shared earlier, let me just make sure um, we can navigate this today. During our session today together, we are going to explore ideas, experiences, best practices, uh, from different areas of our business, training, operational, marketing, technical, and many more. Basically, anything that would be helpful and beneficial in our quest to help you navigate this quite uncharted territory. So on our agenda today, our main topics are going to include the following. Preparing to shut down your center, things to consider while your center is closed for business, um, things that you could be doing in preparation to reopen, and we're going to share um, some resources that are available um, within Cubic AMF. For each topic, we're going to review different considerations and things and items that we recommend doing. Um, during this segment, I'm going to engage my colleagues to collaborate in their areas of expertise to assure that we're providing you the most useful information. With that, as you're preparing to close down your venue, for 
somewhat of an extended period of time, and of course, none of us know how long that may be. There are some things that um, you could be taken into consideration, particularly when it comes to your equipment and hardware. Mike, um, can you share with our participants today, what are some of those considerations? Absolutely, good afternoon, everybody. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what we're gonna to do to get the center ready to shut down for extended period of time from the pin spotters and concrete terminals. What we're gonna to wanna to do on the terminals is you know, get out, make sure everything's closed on the terminals before we get out of Conqueror. We're gonna to wanna to make sure all the lanes are closed, all the tabs are closed, all the shifts are closed. And then after we do that, we're gonna exit out of Conqueror on all the terminals, shut down windows on all the terminals, and you know, finally power everything off at the breakers. There's a really good detailed explanation of all this out on our website. And it's under the support link on the site. We'll be showing that off later. And a couple other things to note, you're gonna to wanna to shut off power to absolutely everything, the pin spotters scoring included. If you have extended services like web reservations or any cloud services with us, if your server's powered off, those are not going to be functioning as they do rely on your system being online. And with your lane machine, you're gonna to wanna to keep that in the most climate controlled portion of the building. If you're going to be turning your climate control off or putting it somewhere outside of the recommended range for the lane machine, it's best to leave that somewhere near the interior of the building where you know the temperature doesn't change very much. And now let's hand it off to Brian Kane and get his view on the subject. Hello everyone, just wanted to go over a few of the things that you could be preparing in the facility and your property when you're getting ready to be closed for a period of time. One of the big ones that Mike just touched on is going to be your uh, HVAC system. Um, each area of the country is a bit different depending upon humidity and things of that nature. So the temperature that you should be setting should be the optimal temperature that uh, is dependent upon your area of the country uh, in regards to humidity, heat, and air conditioning. The biggest thing obviously at this point would be if you're in a heated area, you want to bring that temperature down to something uh, that is lower than you would normally run for a low just to keep your heating costs down. And the same is true for any air conditioned areas. You'd want to keep that uh, turned up a little higher today so that it's not running as much, as little as possible, obviously to save on the use of electricity. Second big thing uh, would be thinking about the security of your property. Today, especially in most centers and FECs, there's more than uh, a few people that have keys to the facility and alarm codes. So another big piece to, would be to make sure that uh, you know everyone that, who does have keys and if they have alarm codes, uh, hopefully your alarm company is keeping track of those codes and who's using them. So you do know who is coming in and going out of the facility at specific times, just in case. We know today uh, with the center being closed for a period of time, there's gonna be some people that do things that we don't want them to do. So having some accountability in that aspect can be a good thing uh, both for yourself uh, and for insurance purposes. Uh, next thing to consider is making sure that any cash within inside of the facility is completely removed. When I say that, if you have any video games that take coins, uh, any candy machines, anything in the facility that can contain money, the best thing to do at this point would be to empty all of those things, getting all the cash out of them and securing all that somewhere prior to shutting down. Um, the last piece would be thinking about anything else that's relevant inside of the facility. If you have a big pro shop or any type of merchandising uh, stuff that you do for um, redemption, just make sure all that stuff is secure and put away in a safe location, locked up, so that you know that it is secure if something stupid does happen. The next piece that we want to talk about, I'm going to hand back to Natasha, is in regards to communication with the employees. Yes, Brian, thank you for sharing that. Um, communication with employees, as we know, you know, with closures of your centers and venues and really a lot of different businesses across the country with a lack of work in some of our industries. Um, some folks are forced to um, eliminate some of their staff, um, furloughing your employees and um, 
basically, you know, attempt to help them navigate um, through this process. If you can, um, try to provide assistance, um, applying for unemployment, um, signing up for benefits, collect, collection of benefits, everything um, in that regards. And also communicate your intentions about returning to work. As we know, we're not sure how long this is going to work or when your facility will be able to reopen, but um, having that open communication and transparency with your, with your employees uh, will sure go a long way. Um, on the flip side, we know a lot of our customers um, have kept their full-time staff or their salary staff um, are still employed. Communicate what your plans are for the upcoming weeks, um, your expectations, um, share, share any of your plans that you may have for projects that you want them to work on. Um, we see a lot of um, communication on social media. A lot of the bowling centers are doing um, different projects um, that they may have been uh, putting off for a while. So any, anything of that nature that you, um, any considerations that you have in that regard, um, share it with your employees so um, they know what to expect in the un upcoming weeks. As we all know, um, the fear of the unknown is much present these days. So anything that we can do to kind of ease that a little bit for them uh, will help us going forward. And alongside with communication uh, with your employees, I'm going to ask Jay Nephew to, to weigh in on some of the communication with your customers and your bowlers. Thanks, Tasha. Yeah, uh, you shouldn't ignore your customers and your bowlers with communication. Obviously, they're going through this time with you and they're experiencing their own set of um, unpleasant un, uh, experiences that we all have, right? So keep use this time to be upfront with them and say, look, we're closing. We have to close down for X period of time. You don't know when the end is, that's fine. Just be honest with them, say we're not gonna be here. Post that on your social channels. Let them know that you're gonna update them as to what the progress is so that they can be excited about coming back to bowling when you're ready to have them back. Um, and then we uh, at Cubic AMS have you know, created a couple of different uh, resources that you can use during that time. One of them being the Beyond the Frame a broadcast that we do a couple times a week right there on Facebook. And we talk about, uh, you know, connecting with your customers during this time. So we've done a show already that has some of the ideas in there. If you have some time to watch that, that would be great. But early on in the, in the thing, when you're preparing to shut down your venue, you just need to be upfront and let them know. Keep them in the loop as to what the status is and what your plans are moving forward. Perfect. Thank you, Jay. Um, as you mentioned, some of the resources that Cubic AMF has created to assist our customers. Um, let me pull, let me talk to you about additional resources be, uh, beyond beyond the frame. Uh, pardon the pun. Um, mm -hmm. On our corporate website, which I'm going to pull up for you right now. Um, I hope you all can see it on the screen, Jay. Since you're unmuted right now, please let me know if if you're not. Yeah, it looks. To you can see it. It's great. Let me go back. Mm -hmm. We have re we have created um, a resources customer resource center um, for this current situation. And beyond the frame, Jay, what you reference right now is featured on that on there as well, um, alongside with um, some tips and useful information for maintaining your center. Mike, I think you referenced the document on here earlier. Um, I'm gonna go there here for a second to show you what that looks like. Um, quite a few pieces of information that could be useful to you to reference as you're preparing to shut down your center, some of the best practices on turning off your um, machines, shutting down your system, um, safety and care of Cubic AMF products, things of that nature. If you haven't reviewed these resources yet, I strongly recommend that you do so. And a few more pieces of information, some um, industry relevant um, links, BPAA, IAPA, um, SBA resources, anything that we think may be beneficial to you um, at this time to help you gather the information that you need and perhaps help you in the upcoming weeks um, 
again, this is on our corporate website. You can, um, you can access this resource directly from there. In addition to that, um, we have our Best Extras blog, which um, has been exclusive for our Best Ex customers, but recently we have made it available to all of our customers. Um, Jay, if you want to elaborate on that a little bit and touch on the content that's being um, constantly uploaded to the portal, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, to Best Extras blog. Yeah. Absolutely. So the blog, like Natasha, like Natasha mentioned, wasn't exclusive for our customers, but we've erased that uh, level of security now. We want anybody who runs an entertainment facility, bowling or otherwise, to have access to this blog because what we're doing is when we host our show on Beyond the Frame Live, we have um, collateral that we created that you can pick up and use right now. Um, different ways to drive revenue when the doors aren't open. And this particular one she's showing right now is um, transforming your center into offering uh, some hard to find items in the community. Maybe you partner with Cisco and you do, uh, you bring in extra cases of toilet paper, or paper towels or cleaning supplies that you can then resell to your audience. Uh, that's another opportunity for them to get something that's hard to find and another way for you to help out the community and maybe drive some revenue too. Uh, but we've given you collateral that's done and ready to use, whether it be for strikeout hunger for a curbside pickup and online ordering, or like I said, that spare, spares are us program where you offering spare, you know, items for sale. Uh, that format also has the blog itself has a lot of different uh, sections to it beyond marketing material. There are, you know, different uh, promotions on there that we'll, we'll talk about. And, you know, we do a lot of fun stuff with different holidays. So any of our content that we're going to need for promoting Cubic AMF specific product is there too, with regards to things like hyperbowling. And it's really simple to sign up for this blog. All you have to do is drop an email to the address on screen, BES, X-T-R-A-S, best extras at cubicamf.com. In the email, just put your name, your center name, and your email address, and we'll get you hooked up to the blog. It is uh, a WordPress uh, doc, uh, blog, so you may have to create a WordPress account, but it's completely free, and you don't have to create a WordPress account in return. You can just view ours. Perfect, Jay. Thank you so much. Um, for sharing all of that. Again, our um, cubicamf.com, our corporate website, um, Best Extras blog, Beyond the Frame um, group, Facebook group, and also there's always our corporate Facebook page um, that has been constantly updated for your benefit, providing all of the resources that are available for you to take advantage of at this current time. Okay, so. Um, those are some of the items we recommend doing as you're preparing to shut down your venue. Let's now switch gears and talk about what are some of the things that you could be doing now that your venue is closed, especially for those of you that still have staff on hand. We know in the bowling business, there are always things that we could be doing in the center, um, and some of them are... Um, sometimes kind of put on a back burner depending on their volume and how business is going. So again, I'm going to bring in um, Brian Kane and um, Mike Randizzi to start talking about some of the resource or some of the things that you could be doing. And let's start off with uh, building and facility maintenance. So a few of the things guys that uh, at this time would be uh, very easy to get to and do, um, especially with no one being in the facility, now would be a great time to work on doing that real deep cleaning of your grills, your fryers, refrigerator and freezer, freezers, as well as your walk-ins. I mean, obviously at this time, since you're not gonna have a lot in them and there's no customers in the facility at a lot of the locations, this is that perfect opportunity to really do a great cleaning on those. Second thing would be your ice machines. As we know, they're always very particular at times, but now would be a great time to do a very good cleaning of your ice machines. Uh, if you have any paint or repair uh, things that need to be addressed that you've been putting off that uh, you were looking for slower times, obviously now would be a great time to work on getting some of those things done prior to 
reopening, it's giving you that good opportunity. Um, another big thing is going to be checking the expiration dates um, on your food and drinks because obviously some of those might run out prior to uh, you reopening the facility. Um, so come up with a plan for some of those things if that is the case for your food and drinks. If you have any remodeling or updating projects uh, that you might have been putting off, now might be a good time to think about considering doing some of those. And one of the biggest things um, would be starting that summer schedule maintenance that you do on the pin centers. Now would obviously be a great time to do that, especially for those centers that we always hear, you know, a lot of the mechanics say, well, we're way, way too busy to get some of this stuff done. Now obviously would be the perfect opportunity to really have the mechanic go through and start doing a lot of that summer maintenance, those things that are almost impossible to get done while the center's running. Now you could get a lot of that stuff wrapped up so that when you are ready to reopen, you've already got a lot of that stuff addressed and taken care of. The second piece that uh, we wanna talk about is going to be some of your system cleanup. And I'm gonna ask Natasha to go through this with me in regards to some things that you can do actually in Conqueror uh, sure. in regards to making some modifications and changes at this time and just cleaning things up prior to getting ready to reopen. Yes, and Brian, you know, as we do upgrades, um, Conquer upgrades in, in particular, um, we often find a lot of the things in the system that are either old or haven't been used in a long time, but, and I know I'm guilty of this too, um, sometimes it's just easier to uh, stop using something versus going through the system and really um, deleting unused items. These things, for the most part, a, a lot of the times we see a lot of old price keys that haven't been used in years, but haven't really been taken out of the system or disabled. Um, so we recommend doing that. Re reviewing your price keys and deleting old and unused items. Um, packages, things of that nature, but also focusing on maybe building your price keys for the upcoming season. Um, any specials that you know you may be offering once the center reopens, or maybe even building the rest of your price keys or the price keys for the rest of the year. I know for myself, I used to do that in the summer uh, because they used to be our slow time. So we would have um, everything figured out for the rest of the year and while the center is closed we would go in and build all the packages and all the price keys and specials and different things and as I'm sure many if not all of you are familiar with the um, feature in Conquer where you can set up those price keys to become available a certain time and then disabled at a certain time so they don't have to be open to everybody right away to be used um, so you can now use this time where you're not um, busy with other projects to manage, um, conquer, and upgrade your price keys. Another thing that we often see in the system is old employees, uh, they're no longer with the company, still being in the system and not disabled. It's always good to go through and um, clean up your conquer and delete all of the old employees or maybe staff that's no longer with the company. Um, also, clear any park lanes or park shifts, um, and also any printable shifts that are still in the system. Um, another thing would be to organize and update your customer database. We know that's also one of those things that project can get uh, quite complex, and a lot of times when uh, when we're busy and don't have a lot of times on our hand, a lot of time on our hands. Uh, we tend to kind of put that on the back burner, and this is also a perfect time to give that um, some attention as well. Um, Brian, can you think of anything? Oh, I have one more. Never mind, before I ask you. Um, update your advertising content and MMS content. Um, anything that you currently display in your overhead monitors or um, your MMS units, um, you can set that up ahead of time so that when you reopen, hopefully soon, you want that there will be one less thing you will have to worry about at that time. Um, Brian, anything else you can think of in terms of updating Conquer? Yeah, so one, one that comes to mind real quick is thinking about doing like a refresh on some of your lane option sets. 
um, considering that when you reopen, maybe you want to have the center have a new look. So maybe you want to go through your lane option sets that you're using at different times. Maybe change the environments that you're using so that when the center does reopen and customers start to come back in, you're going to have a fresh, clean look down at the consoles and up on the overheads as they're playing. Um, another big thing to consider, which always gets put off because of time, is a revamp of your POS. If your POS, if you're using Conquer for your point of sale, and it's been quite some time since you've done any major changes to your point of sale, now would be the perfect opportunity to look at what you're offering, what's working and what's not, and maybe make a revamp to your point of sale. And things can change between then and now as opposed to what you might be wanting to sell or that you are going to sell. So looking at it that way, now would be the perfect opportunity for that POS change. The last big thing here that I'd like to point out would be, and this is this works in not only system cleanup, but this works with closing down the venue. But one big thing that I would really push to you guys is to make a backup of things to the cloud that are gonna be essential to operations, just in case something stupid were to happen prior to you reopening. When I say that, the things that are important to be, to be backed up would be your conquer backups. Um, your BLS, make sure that you have them all backed up. If you're using Dazzle or you're using any books, QuickBooks or Peachtree or any of the accounting programs on site, make sure that you're doing a physical backup to the cloud. And if you're not using the cloud functionality at this time uh, with OneDrive or Dropbox, then I would suggest to at least back up to a USB stick um, all of these pieces so that you can physically take it off site with you so that in the event something you know does happen, you'd still have a complete backup of everything that was going on with inside of the facility prior to basically shutting down. So with that, I'd like to uh, have Mike uh, Randisi come back in and talk about some of the maintenance things that can be done with the equipment. Thanks, Brian. We're going to be doing an extensive webinar on all the maintenance that we can do the equipment so for right now we're just going to touch on some of the higher level stuff that can be done if you have a version of conquer waiting to be installed on your system and it's been nagging you for a while saying hey push this button and it'll upgrade to the latest version now's the best time to do that so go ahead and do that know that we do have techs in the office so you can call in and still get support with that if you'd like while everything's shut down, it's a good time to clean around the computers and you know, clean under your machines. Just clean all around stuff. Make sure the computers have adequate ventilation. It, overheating computers is never something we want to deal with because it usually ends up in catastrophic failure. So keeping the vent holes on the computers clean is really the biggest thing and making sure air can get around them. If possible, start the stuff up about once a week and just give it a thorough run through and test everything you possibly can. If you have the ability to test the pin spotters, you know, throw a couple balls down, make sure everything's still running properly. If you can run the lane machine, go ahead and run the lane machine to keep it in shape and keep it getting used. Run your peripherals, your receipt printers, pull displays, make sure all those are working properly. You know, just let everything run if you can. If not, you know, keep everything down, keep it cleaned up, you know, straighten any cables out that need to be straightened out. And last but not least, double check your UPSs, the battery backups for your computers. You can do this by, you know, unplug everything from it, make sure it's shut down before you unplug it, and then unplug the UPS from the wall you should be able to plug something like an alarm clock into the battery backed up side and have it power up. If you don't, it's a good time to get that UPS replaced with something that will keep the computer on for a couple minutes before it shuts down. And with that, let's hand it off to Jay Nephew and let him talk about staying social. Hey Mike, before you do that, Jay, I'm sorry to, to jump in before you real quick. <laughs> no worries, no worries. <laughs> uh, Mike, when you talk about battery backup and if that unit does fail is that something that the customers have to order through us or is that something they can purchase on their own we recommend ordering it through us but it is possible you can go out and purchase that on your own at whatever a local 
local electronic supply shop you have. Okay. Amazon carries them, Best Buy carries them, Newegg carries them. Okay. So okay. they are readily available. And I do have one quick question for you and or Brian. Um, there's been a lot of talk about Windows being updated on your PCs. And I know Brian talks to me all the time about my computer and the things that I don't <laughs> sometimes keep up to date. Jay, don't laugh. He talks to you about the same stuff. And I know you yeah. guys are very particular yeah. about that. I know you're trying to, to avoid any potential issues by, by keeping these pieces up to date. Can one of you, Mike or Brian, um, can one of you elaborate on that? Is there anything you would you would suggest to our customers to to keep doing or or, or start doing uh, during this time? Yeah, well, I think Mike pointed it out a little bit at the beginning uh, of his uh, section here. I think the big thing is for the customers to make sure that they check for Windows updates on all of the PCs before they start to shut them down and power them off, because okay. now's the perfect opportunity to make sure that all the updates and things that need to be put in place are done. If that hasn't been done. In some locations, if they haven't done it for a long while, it could take a, a significant amount of time for the updates to happen. But certainly this is the perfect opportunity to make sure that they do get all of the PCs up to date with any updates that are required by Windows um, so that they are nice, clean, and ready to go when we're ready to fire everything back up. Perfect, and I'm sorry if I missed that in the beginning. Um, but I do remember Mike saying, if there are any issues, do give us a call. Our technicians are still working and available to assist customers should they run into any issues, correct? Absolutely. Perfect. As always, we can count on you guys. Thank you for that. Okay, now, um, Jay, again, I'm sorry for jumping in in front of you, but I know <laughs> um, you can talk about this Top particular topic all day long. So tell us. I know, I know. What should you know, everybody do to stay social? Well, uh, it's interesting. Yeah, to stay social, you should be doing that. You should be communicating on a regular basis with your customers over your social channels. Now, for many of you, it's Facebook. For hopefully, you have multiple channels that you're managing, whether it be an Instagram account or you know you've got a YouTube channel that you're uploading content to. Also, remember you do have a wide swath of customers from the ages of three and four, all the way, well, not that they're going online to watch you, but my point is you're attracting a, a large age group to 104 to four, right? So all the generations are in there and they all kind of use the internet and social media channels differently. So if you're trying to attract the younger crowd and you want to speak directly to them, you may have to, uh, you know, shift downshift to TikTok or to Snapchat. Uh, you know, if you're trying to get the boomers, you might have to upshift to Instagram or, or, or Facebook. You know, you can see where I'm going with this. But keep that social presence active and make it fun. Let them know, hey, we're still close here, but we're having some good times. The bowl at home challenge, some crazy stuff. You know, set 10 things up and knock it down with something and call it a bowl at home challenge. You'll be surprised what people post back there. And we just did a whole show on this yesterday. Uh, staying social while practicing social distancing is like impossible, but it's really easy in the long run. You know, like how does that, doesn't even sound like you could do that. So we gave you uh, a list of 21 suggested social media posts, and there's a lot of ways you can take this. And there, that's just a start. Like people are doing an amazing job on social media now. I'm, I'm following this, but that alone is one thing. I'm going to take a little bit of a detour for a moment. Um, you guys sparked my, uh, my curiosity and my interest when you started talking about cleaning up your acute, your conqueror system with old employees and price keys and all that use conqueror or whatever pos system you have use it to your advantage right now we have the report in conqueror called what's hot what's not you can run that for any time frame so maybe you look at the last six months and you say what are the crappy things that are not moving you know we've sold four grande ice cream nachos in the last six months. Why am I carrying ice cream and nacho uh, things for that, you know, hot fudge or whatever? Maybe you don't need to carry that much inventory. Maybe you can eliminate some of these lower moving items that are costing you uh, to have uh, product on hand that you're not using. Or the opposite could be true. Maybe you say, well, we're carrying these things. What else can I make from them? So think about your menu differently and position yourself 
so that when you get ready to open, maybe you've got a menu revamp. Maybe you've pared down your offerings to the really most popular ones and you've added a couple new ones without adding inventory. And that's a key. You know, your food vendors will work with you on that. Your Cisco's, your U.S. Foods, your Mains, whomever you're working with. They'll come in and say, oh, you already carry uh, blue cheese crumbles and this and that. We're going to do uh, chicken breast stuff with this and whatever. You know, they'll, they'll give you ideas too. Um, so new specials, new packages, look at your menu to revamp it. And, you know, think about some new concepts that you might be able to offer when you're ready to open again. Maybe this is the time for you to consider that drop-in league that we've always talked about that didn't seem to work before uh, in many cases. But now it might be really attractive to some people. Oh, I can come and bowl anytime during the week and have my scores count and I'm, I don't have to be exposed to the whole league at the same time. You know, that may be an option for some of you. So use this time that you're close creatively to think about how you can better not only your business for your customers, but better your business model for yourself. Thank you, Jay. Those are some great ideas. And I love that what's hot, what's not report and conquer. You can really gain some meaningful insights into your uh, business and what products are moving and which products are maybe not. Uh, so thank 100%. you for sharing that. You're welcome. Um, speaking about getting creative, Brian, I want to ask you, obviously, as a proprietor, um, you have a lot of insight in this arena that I think would be quite beneficial to our viewers. Can you share some ideas on lowering costs during this time where the business is not open? Are there any things that our customers should be considering? Absolutely. So as a proprietor, I went through a lot of these things already. So I just wanted to throw some of them out to you guys. And uh, if you can get some ideas to save on some of your costs, great. I know the BPAA has put out lots of stuff almost daily in regards to different things. But I just wanted to give you guys a few things to think about um, that can possibly save you some uh, expense costs at this time um, before reopening. So one of the things that can be big is credit card fees. If your center is closed and you're not processing any credit card processing at all uh, at this time, it would be the perfect opportunity to call your processor and see if they can kind of put your account on hold. Um, if you're not gonna process, there's still some charges that are related to just the PCI compliancy, your facility and things of that nature. So you might be able to put some of that stuff on hold by giving them a call and asking them basically what they can do for you at this time. Uh, two other big ones are like your trash and cable. If you have a, a satellite TV or just cable, calling those vendors and seeing if they can put off that service uh, for the period of time that you're going to be closed. The same is true with trash. If your trash is not getting picked up now, like it was in the past, it would be the perfect opportunity to maybe cut back on the pickup of your trash. Maybe they can do it every other week or once a month, depending on your, the size of your location if, if you're shut down and you don't have a lot. So in that case, you can really get them to cut back on some of these bills. With being a smaller center, I've contacted most of my vendors and almost every one of them have worked with me to lower costs during the time that we're not gonna be open. A um, couple other things to think about is um, you're going to be looking at like your food and your drinks and such at this time, especially for expiration dates and such. If some of them are going to run out during the time that you're not going to be open, it might be the perfect opportunity to call Coke or Pepsi or Cisco and see if there's something they can do for you in regards to some of that product if it's going to run out. If you can't get anywhere there, then your next best bet is to think about maybe donating it for a tax deduction uh, to a local charity uh, that might be in need of uh, some food and supplies. Or I know some centers have got creative and are doing some cookouts and, and basically giving food out to people that drive up or maybe doing it for friends and family in a safe way using social distancing. But again, if the food is not going to be able to last uh, during the time of shutdown, the best thing you can do is try to do something with it prior to that happening. Uh, another big thing is think about any refrigeration units and ice machines that you may have in the facility. If you're not using them and you've already got them nice and clean, now's the perfect time to consolidate all that food maybe to one or two freezers and shut off some of the others. 
if you have a big walk-in, maybe you can put a lot of that stuff in the walk-in and shut down some of those smaller refrigerators to save on electrical costs and stuff while the facility is not open. So there's a lot of little things to consider, especially like if you have any redemption or video games, things of that nature, making sure all that kind of stuff is shut off and really cut down on your utility usage at this point in time until you are getting ready to, to reopen. Um, just cutting down a lot of those monthly charges and expenses and services. I would say, again, almost all the vendors are willing to work with you, but you do have to take mm -hmm. the time and initiative to call them and see what they will do for you. Um, they're not just going to offer it free out of hand. You're going to have to at least reach out uh, and, and touch with them and, and ask mm -hmm. them what they can do for you. But doing that, I think you can see where you'll be able to eliminate some of the costs or at least lower some of the costs during the time that the center is not open. That's perfect. Thank you so much for sharing that. And as, as you mentioned, other um, equipment or software or whatever else you may have in your venue, um, as we recommend turning on your pin spotters and uh, throwing in a few bolts just to make sure everything is working, be sure to check with your other, other vendors as well, like your um, game room machines, things of that, that nature. Um, they also may have recommendations for you to, to make sure that you're doing the right thing while you're trying to, to save on some cost. Absolutely. Again, Brian, thank you so much for, for sharing all of that. Um, I'm very insightful. Okay, let's move on to, um, to employee training. Now that you have maybe a few members of your staff still on payroll and still coming in and doing some work, um, while obviously this is not the, the most ideal situation to provide any on-the-job training because we don't have customers coming in, we don't have those live scenarios where employees can, can practice and do a lot of things, it still pays to consider some cross-training, utilizing our staff, maximizing them, and utilizing them in different areas of the business. Um, I know a lot of that already happens in our world in vast majority of our uh, bowling centers and family entertainment centers, um, but it still doesn't hurt to, to consider some of those things even on a little bit deeper level. Um, remember this, not all training has to be formal. There are a lot of ways for you to not only just encourage, but provide your staff with additional training and learning. Um, I know uh, a lot of companies in the um, in the training industry right now are offering free online training courses on a variety of different topics. While they're not bowling industry specific, um, they pertain to soft skills, customer service, communication skills, um, all of those things that we want our employees to have. Because while we're the bowling industry, they still need to re, you know, maintain a high level of um, customer service and customer experience and those things and throughout the season and throughout the year we often um, feel that we may not have enough time to provide adequate employee training so now may be a perfect timing for that so I encourage you to, to do some research online and find some of those companies that you may be able to take advantage of the free training resources that um, they're providing right now also, um, as you are working towards preparing to reopen your venue, start thinking about information that you will need once you prepare to open. Uh, what, what kind of training will you want to offer to your employees once they come back? Remember, they may be away from, from their jobs for two or three, maybe six weeks, we don't know. Um, I think it, it wouldn't be quite fair to expect them to just come back in and start working like nothing happens. They will probably need some kind of refresher training, uh, maybe uh, practice working in different softwares and systems that you have in your center for a few days before you, you reopen. So creating that plan today and putting some things down on paper of, of what you will need to, to do before you reopen uh, may be beneficial. Also, a lot of educational webinars social learning. Again, not all training and learning has to be formal, so to speak. Um, Jay talked about beyond the frame, 
group and a lot of um, a live posts that they have that they talk about different things, social media, things that you could be doing to communicate with your customers. These are all the things that your staff could be learning. Um, it will make them better at their jobs. It will, will make them more aware of what's going on in the industry and learn best practices and ideas and different things that your center uh, may be able to take advantage of going forward once you reopen again. Um, Asha, if I could interrupt yes. you for one Absolutely. moment there, because you bring up a really good point, and I just want to reiterate this point to everyone. A lot of our uh, customers, uh, a lot of our bowling center owner operators, you, you all wear every hat in the building, your HR, your right. maintenance, sometimes, you know, you're doing everything. And I get it when it comes to marketing that a lot of times it falls to the bottom of the list or it's the least uh, likely thing that's the first thing that's going to get done. This is your chance. If you have some key staff on hand that you can build trust with and give them a little bit of rope, you may decide, I'm going to make one of these uh, – staff members, my social media manager, and you're going to work hand in hand with them to show them what platforms you and, and discuss with them what platforms you think you need to be on, what those messagings need to be, and give them a little bit of rope and let them go, do their thing and do their posting and encourage them. This could take this whole entire uh, avenue off of your plate that you can now manage instead of execute and manage. It's a little bit easier if you're just managing it, but you do have to start somewhere and build that trust and maybe this is where you can and see that opening and try that out. Perfect. Thank you for thank you for adding that, Jay. I appreciate it. Speaking of um, speaking of that, any ideas or suggestions that you may have in terms of planning that creative reopening or preparing for uh, it? Yeah, I think you need to tell your customers when you're ready to reopen. You know, you're going to be hyping that up, um, and then why not plan a welcome back party? Right, like that should, okay. could be your first big event. Um, point out different things that you've been doing while you're closed. If you haven't been doing that on social media all along, hey, look what we found underneath the ball returns when we, you know, pulled the capping up, a matchbook from 1957, uh, you know, mm -hmm. or <laughs> whose ring is this? <laughs> you know, I don't know. Right. There's so many things that you can have fun with when you, when you do uh, cleaning, remodeling, uh, you know, before and after photos, that kind of stuff goes a long way with your audience because they are like a family to you, the regular bowlers, the, the weekly bowlers, you know, they are invested in your facility. So use that to your advantage and, you know, let them know we've been busy during this time. We're making the place better for you. We can't wait to have you back. And when you do come back, we've got some new products for you to try. We've got some new programs for you to try. And, you know, maybe we've got this brand reopening or welcome back party. So I would, I would be really creative with that. There's no limit there. Exactly. Thank you. Perfect. And as we're starting to talk about what do you do to prepare to, to reopen, um, Mike, Brian, let's touch on a few things that we're going back to, um, to our systems and equipment. Let's talk about a few things that a center should be considering as they're preparing to reopen now. Absolutely. One of the big things, and we talked about it a little earlier, was powering up the system. You know, if you're not doing it uh, basically once or twice a week while you're closed, you're, you're definitely going to want to have a couple of days prior to reopening to power everything up and make sure that you've got everything working and functioning properly. Again, running the, the pin setters, um, whether that means, you know, throwing a couple balls on each lane or physically, uh, if you have uh, the ability to auto cycle the pin setters on their own and let them go through and just continuously cycle so that you can check adjustments and settings and make sure everything's clean. A lot of those things are going to be quite important. Um, if your bowling pins have just been setting, dusting them or cleaning them obviously can play a big part in regards to how well the machines are going to run with them as well. And then a lot of the things that you think about that are done daily while you are open, these are things that might get overlooked with everything that's going on. So think about making sure that you're cleaning your ball lift belts and any tires that you might have, things that you would normally do on a day-to-day -day basis, but they haven't been getting done. So now would be the perfect opportunity prior to getting ready to reopen to make sure that you get all that stuff done 
and you make sure that everything is running and well prepared, um, as well as your scoring. I'll let Mike jump in and put in a few of his ideas um, as to what he thinks as well. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, let me just mention too, before you turn all your print spotters on, before you turn your scoring on, really before you turn anything except for the lights on, give your center a once through walk through and just check for anything that might be in the way or be left out or anything that shouldn't be where it is basically. Out of place, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. 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 Out of place. You know, something like a ceiling tile fell onto a pin spotter or who knows you know, tools left somewhere, something on a ball return that shouldn't be there. It, the last thing we want is an accident when we turn all this stuff on. So it's best to be safe. Make sure everything is going to be okay when you turn things on and there's not going to be, you know, a camera or something that gets smashed on a ball return once we turn everything back on. <clears throat> when we do get everything turned back on, we're going to want to test everything possible before we open for business. It, this includes not only testing the pin spotters, but testing the scoring, testing the front desks, testing the POS machines, testing the ball returns, testing the lane machine. It, when you test the front desks, make sure you're testing all your peripherals as well, your keyboard, mouse, your receipt printer, your poll display, your card swipes, your credit card pin pads. You know, with your pin spotters, make sure the front end and back end ball returns are both working, that the balls aren't coming back with marks on them. Make sure the pin spotters are cycling properly, adjusted properly, as Brian was saying. Make sure your cameras are scoring properly. Make sure your bowler terminals, whether they be keyboards or touch screens, make sure those are functioning properly as well. Basically, make sure everything in the center is functioning properly. That way, there's no surprise when you come to opening day you go to invite that first customer to the lane and then there's a problem with the lane or there's a problem with the scoring, a problem with the front desk. You can't take their payment. It's kind of the last thing you're going to want as you're getting that excitement going, getting that opening feeling going. And then all of a sudden something happens and you have to divert from it. So for sure. And, and for any of you centers that have the old key vision camera, now would be the great opportunity to clean the lens of that camera and your reflectors and sensors, because we have a lot of customers that overlook doing that, and it can make a big difference in the way the ball is detected and the way that camera picture looks by keeping these things clean as well. Oh, that's a good point, Brian. Yeah, making sure everything's clean before you turn it on. Absolutely everything, especially parts that the customer is gonna interact with, like your pin pads for your credit cards your bullet terminals, your seating, you make sure all that's as clean as can be. That's gonna be the first thing the customer notices when they come in, especially after a scare like this virus. They're gonna be looking for cleanliness, so let's do our best to provide it for them. Right, a couple of the other key things too would be obviously start thinking about those utilities that you did cut back on or that you powered down that you're going to have to get turned back on. Start thinking about those things so that they're prepared before you open, as well as any inventory that you might need. Absolutely, yes. Probably and last but not, not least, a... keep in mind guys, if you need us, we will be here. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're here now, we'll be here then, we'll be here after that. If you <laughs> Reach out to us. We're there to help you guys. Just let us know what we can do to help you guys, and we will be there for you. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you guys for for that reminder. Okay, so now that um, you kind of know the steps to take before um, you turn your uh, before you reopen your venue in terms of your um, equipment and systems, let's touch base again on on your staff training. Um, Mike, I didn't know if you if we wanted to talk about um, current version 13 customers being upgraded to Conquer X. Um, I know many of our centers have been upgraded um, to Conquer X in the last few weeks. And um, just a reminder that those staff members that um, are not around at this current time and will be coming back as you're preparing to open, uh, be sure to um, um, for those staff members to view the training video that's located in our customer portal, as well as review any quick reference sheets 
um, for them to be well prepared, especially again for those of you that are, are going to be upgraded to Conquer X. Um, for them, the system is going to um, to look much different. So making sure that the staff is comfortable um, navigating through the system, providing again that refresher training for them uh, would be quite beneficial. Also, refresh your staff and your center procedures. Maybe you have made some changes along the way to your business. Um, even, even if you haven't, be sure to refresh them on your um, center procedures in terms of opening and closing procedures, uh, shift changes, things of that, that nature. So something, uh, things that pertain directly to your business, uh, not necessarily any um, systems that you may have. Um, and again, um, let me interject really quick on that Conquer X. Uh -huh. we, we are offering a free upgrade from Conquer 13 to version Conquer X. So if any of you centers out there are on version 13 and would like to upgrade to X or want to consider upgrading to X, please reach out to us at tech support, either by email or by phone and let us know. And we'll be in contact with you guys and we'll help you through that upgrade during the downtime to minimize the impact on your business. Perfect, thank you, Mike, for bringing that up. And um, speaking of um, ways to reach you, um, we do have a question that came in just a few moments ago. Um, how's the best way to reach you out, Cubic MF, during this time? During this time, you can call in with the regular phone number. It's 866-460-7263. Option three should take you to the tech support option. If you don't feel like reaching us by phone, you can also reach us by email. The email address is scoring tech support, all one word, at cubicaamf.us. And either way, we will work with you and do our best to get you up and running as soon as we can. Thank you, Mike, for sharing that. Um, and thank you, Bill, for bringing up the question. Okay, with that, Jay, are there any, any things you want to add in terms of uh, possible new offerings, anything that a center may want to consider as they are preparing to, to reopen their venue? Um, I think we kind of talked about this. I, I jumped the gun a little bit, um, but yeah, you should be looking at things like your menu, things like your, your package deals that you have. You know, plan now to look at the business differently. We're all going to uh, not be able to see the business world exactly the way it was before we, we came into this, right? And much like the 9-11 uh, scenario, things were different afterwards. Things are going to be different after this. But if you can accept that, and if you're not focusing on trying to be exactly the way you were beforehand, I think you're putting your energies in the right spot. So if you're saying, look, I don't need to have – uh, 103 menu items. I don't need to have this, that, or the other thing. I, I think what my core staff, uh, my core customer base is wanting is more along these lines and whatever that may be for you, you're going to decide. But, but think about really setting yourself up for success in a new business environment. And that may mean some small changes, but also it could mean some drastic changes for you. And they're all going to be to the positive. They're not going to be to the negative because you're going to focus on the positive side of this. Perfect. Thank you, Jade, so much for sharing that again. Um, okay. With that, we have covered, um, we have covered our three major components of the topics that we wanted to discuss today. I want to take a moment and review the resources that are available to you one more time. Um, again, we start with our cubicamf.com, our corporate website, and I'm going to pull that up for you again um, from our homepage, the resources for COVID-19 is going to be the page that's going to uh, provide you with all of the resources that are available uh, beyond the frame Facebook group. Um, a lot of the resources available to maintain your center. And again, our industry resources. We know um, 
IAPA and especially BPAA has been working very hard, especially in the last few weeks, to gather as much resources as they possibly can to help our proprietors and industry and the community um, manage this, these uncertain times as best as possible. And Cubic AMF has gathered all of those resources to our um, corporate webpage um, for the convenience for you to be able to access them from, uh, from one spot. Then we have discussed our um, best extras blog. And again, Jay has provided us with um, information on how to sign up for the blog if you're not already a member. Again, a lots of useful information and resources that don't pertain just to this um, particular environment that we're in, but a lot of the resources, marketing tips, um, anything that pertains to our products, um, you can really take advantage of that as well. Um, and then again, we have discussed our Beyond the Frame Facebook group, as well as Cubic AMF Facebook page. Again, a lot of the information posted on there um, in hopes to provide you as many resources as we possibly can to assist you and support you uh, during this difficult time. And um, Jay, Brian, Mike, thank you guys so much for your insights and contributions and all of your knowledge that you have shared with us today. Um, at this point, I would like to ask our participants to submit their questions. Um, I'll give you a few moments to do this. Again, you can go ahead and submit your questions via the chat feature now, and we will address them as they come in. Um, so we'll give you, actually, I'm going to read a couple of well, questions that come in. Yeah, go there's ahead. one right now from Carol. Okay. Uh, um, Carol, Carol wants to know how many, go ahead, I'll let you do it, sorry. No, 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 go ahead, go for it, Jay. <laughs> Okay, she said how many centers on the call are still open? And then also, is this call going to be recorded so that we can get and disperse to our other centers? I let you know, Carol, yeah, the call's gonna be available on record uh, shortly after we're done with the broadcast. It just takes a while to process and it'll be posted for you to, to listen to and share out again. And I don't know if I can answer that question as to how many are still open. I would venture to say very, very, very few, if any. We, we, yes, that's Jay, we guess. could ask them to raise their hand for any center that's open. Oh, great idea. See, this for, is why you're the moderator, Tasha. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> for any, for our participants, if any of you are currently open, we have um, quite a few participants on our webinar today, uh, but I don't see any anybody raising their hand. So, um, oh, one. Yeah, one. Brad. Yeah, Brad. Can you tell us the name of your center, please? And what state you're in or location? Yes, and so you what can... state you're in. That's awesome. I mean, that's, <laughs> you know, one out of... Brad's on the you know, island of no virus. <laughs> yes, Brad, good for you. That's awesome. We, we hope that the rest of us will join you there very, very soon. Yeah, how um, much room you got on that island? <laughs> yes, yes, please. We're just open for carryout food, though. Okay, okay, that's... Yeah. The That's fair are, enough. Yeah. <laughs> but still yes. trying to do quite a few, Brad. That's a good point. Um, yeah, when we when we talk about being open, majority of us dive deep to bowling directly. We don't even, you know, hardly consider every anything else. But yes, many many of our centers um, are open. They, they kept their food and beverage. Um, operations still running for takeout, deliveries, curbside service, whatever, in whatever capacity they are able to, a lot of them are continuing to offer that service, which is and fantastic. Yeah, it is, Tasha. I'm also going to direct them to the blog. If you're watching this and listening yeah. and you have a food and beverage uh, operation that you have closed, <laughs> Um, we've given you on the blog, it's called When Hunger Strikes. We did a whole campaign for you. You've got a menu. You can pop some items in right now, a social media post that you can put up saying, hey, call up, at, order the food, come by, pick it up at the uh, curbside. Um, you can start today at least generating some revenue and moving some product if you have that uh, ability. So look on the blog for that. It's called When Hunger Strikes. <coughs> Yes, it's probably going to be in one of the recent posts, but yeah, there are quite a few 
quite a few pieces on that topic. Thank you, Jay, for bringing that up. And Carol, one more time, Ev, uh, the recording of this webinar will be posted in our customer portal. Um, on the left-hand side of the menu on the bottom, there's um, um, a special page for it called webinars, and all of our pre-recorded webinars are located in there. And again, when we talk about training your staff um, on some of these pieces, you can offer them to, to watch some of the pre-recorded webinars. Um, there are all sorts of topics on there from marketing, best practices, conquer and best sex related, corporate parties, you name it. Um, th there's a variety of topics in there. So hopefully that could be helpful to you as well to utilize um, for some of your staff at this time. Um, and we have another question that has come in. Christine, thank you for submitting it. Any special advice for centers on college campuses? Hmm. Jay, you want to? Yeah, you're stumping me, Christine. I, no, I want to say that you've got a captive audience. So if you have food and beverage, I'm sure you're going to move product there by allowing the pickup orders, you know, at that time. Um, but the other thing I would think about is you probably have to take direction from, you know, whatever the campus is uh, mandating. So you may be, uh, I don't want to say hand tied, but you may not have the flexibility, you know, a private independent center in the middle of wherever is going to have. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would say, uh, maximize what you can with what you're allowed to do. I don't know any other way to say it. You know, it's so vague, but um, yeah, you should certainly take advantage of your unique situation if you have a captive audience. Yeah, and it also depends. Um, is there anybody staying on campus at this time? I know a lot of colleges have to, had to evacuate their campuses, so no college students um, are there at this time. If you're able to, could you offer your, your services outside of the college campus? You know, depending on the, on the area that you're in, um, this is what a lot of the restaurants are doing, um, offering their services in a much, um, much wider spectrum other than just their um, area that they typically cover. Um, and Christine said, love your idea of 10 pin social media challenge. Our campus is completely remote now. There you go. So Hashtag there, goal at home. Yeah. Hashtag support that, polling. <laughs> exactly. That may be a nice way to engage them um, at this time. Perfect. Jay, there you go. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for your answer and for being helpful. Um, Thanks, okay, Christine we'll and you, Carol, for your question. Of course, of course. Um, We'll give you a couple more moments for any of you that you want to, if you want to submit your questions. Again, um, a recording of this webinar will be available um, on our customer portal. Simply log in and select webinars from the menu on the left hand side. And if you don't currently have access to the portal, you can just go and register for it right from our homepage, uh, cubicamf.com. If you go to support tab, on the right hand side, um, when you click access under tech support customer portal, if you don't have um, access to it right now, you can just click the register button and um, create your username and password. Um, at this point, I don't see any additional questions that came in. Again, like Jay said, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Bill, great information. Thanks for sharing. Absolutely, it is our pleasure. I was just going to say, Bill. Um, Christine, Carol, thank you guys so much for submitting your questions. Uh, Cuba KMF team, thank you so much for your contributions. Um, above all, we hope that you stay healthy and well. Um, again, we'll be hosting these webinars every Wednesday at two o'clock. We'll have a specific topic to focus on each week, and hopefully we can continue to bring useful information to support you and help you navigate through this. And um, it, it was my pleasure to moderate to today's webinars. Um, I'm gonna give me just one second. There's one more message. Um, Amanda, thank you so much for saying hi. Um, same thing to Christine. Again, remember guys, tough times don't last. We've been through, through so much over the years in the bowling communities, uh, in the bowling community. Tough times do not last. Tough people do. We're all in this together. We're here to support you. Anything you need going forward, please, don't hesitate, give us a call, reach out. We'll do anything we can to, um, to help you out. Until next week, stay well. 
um, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great Thanks, day. everyone. Sending love and good vibes your way. Thank you, Jay. Likewise.